The last few days I have been covering all the exciting games played at the six player double round robin at the Grand Chess Classic, which eventually was won by Magnus Carlsen in a very exciting uh, way. But apart from that, there was also a fantastic big open tournament uh, taking place at the same time with more than 2,500 uh, players and a lot of strong grandmasters and other title players uh, were playing in the same venue. And I'm going to show you what happened in the critical final round. As going into that final round, there were six players on seven points out of eight. And among them, Hans Niemann, he is back in business. Seven out of eight, he was scoring six, draw, uh, six wins and two draws so far. And in the last round, he is playing against a very strong player from Serbia, Velimir Ivic. And I mean, there were two other very important games, but let, let's first check out what happened in the key game. As Ivic is playing with the white pieces and Hans, after the move, one e4 goes for the Sicilian. That's Already a very good sign that we get an uh, exciting game, not in uh, Berlin, where both players will probably accept the draw and they can settle for a top score, but probably not the first prize. No, both players are going into the game with the mindset of uh, trying to win the event and get this uh, get this check of uh, 2,000 uh, euros. So after c5, knight f3, d6, d4, pawn takes, knight takes, knight f6, knight c3, a6, the Sicilian Nidorf bishop to e3. Black goes for the move e5. This is all well-known theory. And we get to see one of the most fashionable, most topical lines out there in this uh, opening. f3, bishop e7, queen d2. And here, black plays the move h5. This is also a very typical move to prevent white from attacking on the king side uh, early on with a move like uh, g2, g4. And then pawn can come to g5. Now the pawn is on h5. You're preventing that at the same time. It will probably probably be harder for black to uh, to castle on that uh, side of the board. But white played the uh, sharpest move out there. Knight to d5, occupying a nice square. But black immediately whips it off with knight takes d5, pawn takes d5. The bishop goes to f5. And here bishop e2 is played. And now a trendy uh, idea here for black is to, uh, to give a check with the bishop on h4. So black is trying to provoke why to make an uh, awkward move. I mean, g3 is the, the principled reaction, but at the same time, it's also a, a bit of a weakening move. The bishop is happy to go back to e7, even at the cost of a tempo. Black likes to uh, see this uh, weakening uh, pawn moves, which means that white is probably no longer interested in castling uh, kingside. And therefore, castling queenside is played. And here, first, really interesting moment of the game. There have been uh, played numerous of uh, Grandmaster games with this exact position. And in all these games, Black continues developing here with the move knight d7, followed by uh, rook c8, uh, putting pressure against the pawn on uh, c2. And white likely is going to play bishop d3 to neutralize the pressure. Well, it's a very interesting line, but instead of the move knight to d7, Hans, uh, doesn't play a novelty, but it has almost uh, never been played before. But it's a typical Nidorf move. You play the move a6, a5, with the idea of going after that knight on uh, b3. The knight is not such a great piece. And, uh, well, white can, uh, can react in, in different ways. But I think the initial response by Ivic is, uh, is a pretty good one. He goes for the move bishop to d3. And his idea is that now, if bishops are going to be swapped, then after attacking the knight, the knight can just come back into the game via d2. It's a nice central place from where it can come to c4. Maybe it can go to e4. That looks absolutely okay. But Hans, definitely still uh, prepared here, goes for the move bishop d7. He doesn't want to go for the exchange of light squared bishops. And uh, I think that's uh, that's a good move. It has still been played, this uh, idea, I think, in two earlier correspondence uh, games. And, uh, well, in these games, White uh, had to uh, to make some space for the knight to be able to uh, to draw back to uh, to d2. And there followed uh, the move queen to e1. This may look strange at first, but as I said, if the knight can come back to, uh, to d2, it has quite uh, nice prospects coming into the game via d2 to c4 or, or e4. While in case of a3, you just block with your uh, pawn 
uh, with the move b3, the a file remains closed. It's a complicated position, but definitely this was still checked by Hans uh, at an earlier point. But instead of queen e1, white played here the move king to b1. And I'm not saying it's, it's really a bad move, but after the move a4, the knight first of all has to go back to an uh, inferior square. I, I think c1 is not such a good place for the for the knight but there's another drawback of uh, wise decision to play king b1 is now with the move queen a5 black is forcing the exchange of queens i mean white can move the queen away but then the pawn on d5 is going to be taken that is a serious uh, a problem you don't want to see that happening so white decides to take on a5 rook takes a5 and this is one of these sicilian end games Queenless middle games, I should actually call it. There are still too many pieces on the board to call it an end game, uh, in which black is absolutely comfortable. If if I know that in all these Sicilian queens are going to be exchanged, I would play the knight in uh, in every game. Uh, here you are attacking the pawn on uh, on d5. The reason why the exchange of queens is so easy for for black is that you're not going to be checkmated uh, any soon, uh, anytime soon. So white played here the move c4, defending the pawn on uh, d5. And well, there are various interesting uh, possibilities here. It's not a, not a forcing theoretical position any longer. I think in general, what you would like to do as black is get your knight to, uh, to c5. That could be a nice uh, blockading uh, square, or at least you want to put it on a6. If you place the knight on a6, there is the move bishop b6 and your rook is trapped. But interestingly, even uh, Machine is saying that after something like bishop d8, you do have still quite good compensation for, uh, for the exchange. And the reason is that there are no open files. So white is not able to, uh, to find a uh, way to activate its, uh, its rooks. But anyway, um, Hans didn't uh, play uh, knight a6. He may have considered rook a8 first and then knight a6, but he decided differently and also very typical move. He went for the move f5. And that is something I like from these knight or structures. I'm playing the Sicilian Sveshnikov myself, and you also get these structures sometimes there as well. Uh, White is having a majority on the queen side, but as you can see, it's very difficult to mobilize it at, uh, at this point. And black has plans to uh, activate uh, its, uh, its pawns. This uh, huge pawn formation on the king side is potentially uh, able to, um, to create a passed pawn, but most importantly, it also restricts uh, white from activating its minor pieces. So what should white do here? Well, not easy to say. I'm not a fan of the plan chosen by Ifich. He plays the move a3 with the aim of opening up the king side, but I think that can also lead to new weaknesses on that side of the board. And instead, I would recommend here this move, rook h2 e1. And the reason I'm recommending this move is that after king f7, I want to drop back with my bishop as a rule of thumb, I don't like playing pawn moves on the side where I'm weaker. So I think now queens have been exchanged. Exchanged. It makes no sense to keep looking for ways of opening up files on the king side. But instead, I'm looking for a plan to activate all my pieces and let them work together. And by dropping back to f1 with the bishop, the knight is ready to come to d3, prepare the move c5, putting pressure against the pawn on d6, and also indirectly against the pawn on e5. It's a very complicated positional battle. Anything can happen here. But let's see what happened in the game after the move h3, as here Hans dropped back with the rook to uh, a8. So very soon he hopes to, uh, to connect his rooks and uh, develop the knight via a6 to the center. So now white continues playing aggressively with the move uh, g4. And obviously, if you do take on g4, uh, you are going to help white uh, opening up the h-file. So white will now be able to seize the initiative on uh, on the king side. So you shouldn't do that. Instead, uh, Hans reacted very well with the move g6. After gf5, gf5, uh, also not sure this uh, should have been played, but you can see that here, the g-file has been opened, but also the pawns on f3 and h3 are now isolated. And even though they're not under an attack yet, you can imagine they will become uh, liabilities uh, later later on. So how to how to proceed here with white? I, I think something like f5, uh, sorry, f4 should be considered to uh, stop that pawn from f5 to come forward. It's always a difficult decision to make because you do allow black to advance the pawn to e4. But in such cases, okay, you, you also get a square for your bishop on uh, d4 and maybe the bishop can come back to e2 to hit the pawn on h5. And well, very soon white is 
going to try to make use of the uh, G file. But this didn't happen. Instead, White played here the move C5. And frankly speaking, the, the mixture of these plans, on the one hand making some pawn moves on the king side and then playing on the queen side, I don't think this is matching uh, very well with uh, with each other. And Blackwell has to uh, to decide here how to react. If you do take the pawn on C5, I imagine that something like uh, rook H E1 with the idea of uh, getting uh, the, the rook to a better uh, file to hit the pawn on E5, maybe the knight can come to C3. There are quite nice uh, prospects for uh, for white in uh, in this case. At least there are some practical uh, play and reasonable conversation. But the move played by Hans is a much better uh, response. He played the move knight a6. So he wants to take with a knight on uh, c5. Of course, white is going to take first on d6. Bishop takes d6. Rook h to g1. So the rook is now threatening to enter on the seventh rank and therefore king f7 is played. So here we see that the king is excellently placed. Now the rooks are connected again and I think black is clearly better. Why? Thanks to this uh, pawn duo. e5 and f5, it's a two versus one. You're able to come forward. White always got to reckon with pawn pushes, maybe e4 sometimes, maybe f4. Uh, and the pawn on d5, that is a passed pawn, but it is very well controlled by uh, the black bishop. So that is not an, a dangerous weapon for, for white at all. White played here the move a3, rook a to g8. And here you see, interestingly, that black is trying to take over on the uh, king side. I think this is a, a very nice move. Um, white played here the move knight to e2. Logical move, probably not the best one. I, frankly speaking, I'm struggling to understand it because I see that now with a move like f4, black is hitting the bishop on e3 as well as the pawn on h3. And therefore, if we take it back for one, one move, maybe white in hindsight should just have advanced the pawn to h4. Now, after something like f4, you put the bishop on f2, and it's not a great position, but it will be much harder for black to attack the pawn. Now, back to the game. After knight e2, strangely enough, Hans didn't play the move f4. I'm really uh, surprised with this uh, decision. Maybe there's something he didn't like, that at some point maybe rooks are getting exchanged, and after that... Uh, the rook can come to h1 to hit the bishop, but okay, maybe there's some deep deep calculation I, I failed to, to understand. But in any case, let's see what happened, because the move played by Hans, it's not bad either. Uh, he just brings its worst piece back into the game. After bishop uh, going back to c2, now he played the move knight to b3. And this may look strange at first, but the knight is a really annoying piece for, uh, for white to, to deal with. It uh, prevents... Uh, the king from uh, getting active. You never really want to take the knight either because in the long run, this pawn on b3, it's uh, it's even causing some problems uh, for, the, for the white king. Also, the bishop can be activated uh, very soon. So I think black is in, uh, in, in very good shape. White played h4 to anticipate that uh, move f4. So the pawn will not be hanging. And what should uh, black do here? Well, in the game, there followed bishop e7. So Hans immediately attacked the pawn on h4, which is not the best move. He he could have gone here for rook takes rook first. And after taking back with the rook, which in my opinion is the most obvious reply, then f4, attacking the bishop. And ideally, you would put the bishop on f2, but that's not possible here because of knight e2 with a check you're about to win the pawn on f3. And that's a huge pawn because it creates connected passed pawns in the center. The alternative is to go back with the bishop to c1, but now it's bishop e7. So this is a much better version of the game. The pawn on h4 is uh, likely to fall very soon. And if you defend with rook to h1, then rook g8 is going to be played and black gains control over the open file. So things are looking very, very nice here for black. Um... However, let's see what happened. Bishop e7 played and white played a good move, f4, trying to fight back. Obviously, the pawn on h4 is not hanging at this point. If you take it, there's f takes e5 and white is um, uh, gaining the upper hand. So that is not possible. First, rooks were exchanged on g1. Uh, still, the pawn on h4 is not hanging, of course. If you do take on f4 with the aim of uh, attacking the bishop, 
It's a tempo move, and white's going to take back. But after taking the pawn, well, there's bishop to d1, and uh, the pawn on h5 is going to be falling. So that is not what uh, what black should do. Black instead played a much better move e4, which uh, creates, of course, a protected passed pawn, but also the, the bishop on c2, it's not looking great. So here, white played the move knight d4, aiming for the exchange of uh, of knights. If you do take, there's a bit of a counterplay with, uh, with the bishop, or the bishop can come back to f2 to defend the pawn on h4, things are not that simple. Black is better, but white is, is trying to hold there. But the critical move is to take the pawn on h4 now. This is the, the best moment. You're not minding white capturing on b3, because after doing that, um, well, materials even, but you have a huge asset here in the form of your outside past the h pawn. That pawn needs to be mobilized very soon. How to do that? Well, that is the big question. I think... First of all, it's uh, very important to reckon with ideas like d6 so that the, the king can get in uh, in trouble. I mean, if you play rook g8, there is d6 check and you're going to lose material because after uh, bishop e6, bishop takes, king takes, uh, rook takes g8, the rook is hanging. So that's not going to work. And therefore, uh, well, you, you, you have to deal with... Uh, this check and after the king goes away there, there are also mating ideas the, the rook is controlling the g file so black played here the move rook h7 in hindsight probably bishop d8 is the is the best move so that uh, you're just making space for for your h pawn but after rook h7 white played here the move d6 it's it's a very natural move you would like to activate your light squared bishop but probably a better idea here is to play first this move uh, bishop to b6 to control that uh, d8 square and uh, the bishop on h4 is not looking too great and in case of bishop f6 now there's d6 check bishop e6 and uh, well it's it's just a very complicated fight but thanks to the control over this d8 square after the exchange of uh, bishops on uh, b3 i think it's very difficult for black also to make uh, progress you got to deal with uh, threats like that after king e6, rook g6, it's 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 very, very complicated. But let's get back to the game. As d6 was played, and here black has only one move. If you go to f6 with your king, it's bishop d4 with, uh, with checkmate. Beautiful mating idea. The pawn also contributes to the attack. If you play king f8, then it's rook g8 with uh, checkmate. Once again, the pawn on d6, very important. But the best move for black is to block here with the bishop. Bishop to e6 is uh, played and now swapping the bishops it's not really recommendable the king can just block the pawn on the light square uh, that d pawn is neutralized next black is just going to move the bishop run with the pawn activate the rook targeting the pawn on f4 it's a technically winning end game for uh, for black so instead there followed bishop to a4 the bishop wants to prevent the king from blocking the pawn maybe d7 can be played at some point but now finally this bishop comes back to, uh, to d8. Rook goes to h1 and now it's h4. So the pawn is really strong and uh, practically speaking I, I really doubt white is able to, to hold it. Um, if you uh, play something like, uh, like rook h2 just to make a waiting move I think with a move like rook h6 black has new ideas of trying to wrap up uh, that pawn on, uh, on d6. But in the game Ifich went for the move bishop f2, so he tries to control that uh, that h pawn. But now the key move, which had been uh, forgotten about by uh, by White here, is the move bishop d5, and that is such an important idea because uh, you're preventing uh, White from uh, playing the move bishop d7. Bishop d7 is the move White wanted to play to attack the pawn on. Um, f5 and prevent the king to come to e6 and attack the pawn on d6 because there is now the move e3 with a discovered attack on the bishop and the rook white is uh, going to lose material so that is not possible if you play a move like rook d1 to attack the bishop and support your d pawn then king e6 is going to be played the d pawn is not dangerous and very soon the pawn will just march uh, forward to the uh, queening square so Black now is taking over. Rook h3 was played. King e6 attacking the pawn. And uh, well, there followed the move d7. So the pawn is at least defended now by the bishop. But with the move bishop c4, black is making progress. The big idea here is to play b5 to attack the, the bishop. Even if you play b3 to attack the bishop first, you give a check. 
king c1 and now after b5 the bishop is just even trapped so that is uh, that is winning for black in the game there followed king c1 uh, so there is no bishop d3 check b5 is played you're attacking the bishop bishop goes away and now you can eliminate white's most dangerous pawn rook takes d7 and black is completely winning here he has um, an extra pawn two past pawns one outside past pawn one connected past pawn and uh black's pieces all black's pieces are just better than its uh, counterparts white made a big mistake here or he just wanted to get out get away from this game he decided to take on h4 but it would not have changed the result because after rook h7 um black is pinning the bishop on uh, h4 after bishop takes d8 rook takes h3 black is up in exchange and will win the game so white resigned after rook h7 but as i said other moves are also just really bad there are so many useful moves to be played here for black you can activate your bishop you can try to activate your rook you can even get your bishop around to uh, to f1 and uh, g2 to hit the rook and uh, enable the pawn to come forward so this is just a big moment in Hans his career he managed to win the last round finishes on eight out of nine and since the two other uh, top boards they ended in a draw Hans Niemann is winning the Granke Chess Classic Open Tournament 2024 alone in the not sharing with anyone else he is just having 20,000 euros for himself a nice uh, extra paycheck uh, to enjoy uh, life a bit uh, more uh, he's going to play many more tournaments uh, very soon but the exciting news also as a chess fan we are all curious to see uh, what's going to happen next year as Hans qualified for this uh, uh, double round robin uh, tournament at least for the for the masters section so there is a very good chance that Magnus Carlsen and Hans Niemann are finally going to play each other over the board again remember that the players have settled have settled their um, their court case so uh, no longer uh, Magnus is uh, going to refuse Hans uh, to, to play against Hans so that would be really really exciting we have to wait one more year and we even don't know if the tournament is going to take place again or if uh, Hans is really going to play himself or Magnus is going to accept the invitation but both players they won the tournaments Hans Niemann won the open tournament Magnus Carlsen won the uh, closed event so let's see what the future is uh, bringing for us and well Hans is off to a new tournament in uh, Menorca if I'm not uh, mistaken a very strong tournament probably we will cover some interesting games from that event as well but most importantly the candidates tournaments uh, candidates tournament is about to start in um, in a few days so uh, very exciting for uh, for that as well stay tuned make sure to uh, follow this channel and subscribe if you do like these videos give this video a like make sure to come back to the channel frequently i need your support appreciate all your support guys so uh, stay tuned and i will cover many more exciting games uh, played in the in the near future see you bye bye